Hey everyone, this is Nick with City Rock Hunting, and we're at the dune again. It rained pretty good all last night, so let's see what washed out. See what we find. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. So for the first few fossil finds of the day, some coral in there, a couple different pieces of coral, one there, looks like some bigger coral there, that's cool. Also looks like a shell imprint over here. So I guess you'd call that a death, death plate. And then for the next one, another cool piece of coral. I recently had a friend ask me in one of my comments how I identify rocks. So that's what we'll kind of be doing in today's video too. It really depends on what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for fossils or rocks, because I kind of do different things, but both of them involved me walking around and looking for a while. I will comb over an area back and forth, kind of how you cut the grass, weaving in and out. And then I will go the opposite direction also because my eyes aren't the greatest, so I tend to miss things and find them on the way back. Also, I look for color when it comes to rocks. I like reds, blues, and greens. So I look at what stands out. And it looks like, so I already see this nice red, but I also see that it's got a little yellow to it. It's a cool little pudding stone. When it comes to fossils, I usually look for brown or tan rocks, and I look for the texture on the rock, but I always have to get them wet and see what they are. And then that pattern will really shine. There's a good one there. That's really what I'm looking for is that texture on there. That's a super cool one. I'd say I'm better at finding fossils than I am rocks. I look for patterns also. And there's a lot to choose from out here, so it makes it a little easier. Looks like I already found one. It's got a little white to it on top of the gray or brown. So that's probably a little death plate there. Looks like little crinoids, crinoid stems. So let's see what else we'd find out here. So I found a couple more fossils here and I just wanted to show you what they look like in the ground. So you can see, I can already tell it's probably a Petoskey, but you can see it's got the texture to it. And it definitely helps when it's rained or it's raining, because then they're really wet. Yep, Petoskey. That's really cool. That one will polish up nicely. I can just see that the top of this one is white. That's kind of what stands out there to me. 
That one's pretty cool. It's not the ones I wanted to show you, but that's that's a cool find here too. The other ones I wanted to show you. Again, you're looking for the texture on it. You can kind of see the cladopora there. That's pretty cool. Nice piece of coral. Let's get that wet real quick. That one's a nice piece. I really like that. So again, I'm definitely better at finding fossils than I am rocks. But when it comes to rocks, I look at color again. And I just look at what looks shiny or smooth. It also helps when the sun's out. Lots of agates will shine in the sun. But Jasper will have that nice waxy look to it. Same with Chert, so it's a little more easy to identify. Also the other thing too when it comes to rocks is, it's all about what you like, what stands out to you, and what's special to you. Like this one here. Most people might just say, oh, that's quartz, but I think it's pretty. So it's definitely going to go home with me. And just sitting here, it looks like I found a couple fossils too. Right in front of my face. Can't tell if that's one or not. Looks like it. All based on that texture there that we see on the top there. And it's definitely worth picking up every rock, investigating it more. That one's pretty cool. Another one here with the texture. Looks like another piece of coral. That's cool. Looks like another one. Another important thing that I think I should cover is how I find my areas to rock hunt at. And the biggest tip I use personally is Google Earth. I know there's other rock hunting apps you can use too. But I use Google Earth and I will look for rivers, creeks, lakes, ponds. And then I will also zoom in around those lakes, rivers, or creeks, looking to see if I see any gravel bars. I sometimes use the 3D mode. Especially on a place like this, the dune here, with the sand hill. You can really see if it's a flat ground or if it's a hill. That helps. But I also look for gravel roads because I enjoy walking down those and looking for rocks too. When I see an area this big, 
and think to myself, well, how am I supposed to cover this in a day? I don't. I just take a small section at a time, knowing that I can always come back. And I usually don't make it that far into this place before I run out of water. So just back to kind of zigzagging back and forth. I like to take my time. Really look at almost every rock you can. I don't like to miss anything. Every once in a while I'll spray something off just to see what it is, if it's anything. That red one kind of stands out to me. That's really pretty. course with feldspar. That's a really pretty one. Just keep making our way through. I will say the one rock that messes with me the most would be granite. I love unikite. And that kind of looks the same. At least the pieces I find do. So once I combed over an area, I will then change the direction. Just to get a different perspective. And you see things you didn't see before. Like that's not a fossil, but that's just cool texture in there. So we'll keep going here, see what else we find. So we just came across what I think is another pretty pudding stone. What I noticed was the quartz piece, but the red jasper on the side. I like them to have a little bit more in there, but that's still pretty cool. Still definitely taking it home with me. So there's one I spotted here. You can kind of see it. Right there. Just looks different, looks unique. Not really sure what's going on in that. It's a very interesting one. Not even sure I know what it is. Besides a bunch of quartz pieces in there. Just a conglomerate together. Interesting. One of those ugly rocks that I look for. I 
Oh, it's different. Definitely bring it home with us. If anything, it ends up in the flower beds. Found another one that looked like it had some texture to it. You can already see that it's got some coral on it there. That's super cool. That one's pretty. I like that. This one too. Look like almost a little, yep, yeah, a little Petoskey. That's cool. Oh yeah, another one there. Can really see that one's got a little different color to it in the host track. That's pretty sweet. This one kind of looks a little ugly, but that's what I look for. I don't think I see anything on it though. Oh yeah, do right there. Looks like uh, Serangapora, pipe organ coral. Looks like another little ugly one here. Yeah. Not all of them are winners. Supposed to start storming again here today. So I'm probably gonna take off here shortly. And go figure I'm almost out of water. Do you guys see it? It's right in the middle there. Nice honeycomb coral. Favocetes. The real reason I stopped over here was because of that one there. Looked like it had really pretty color to it. Not sure what type of rock it is, but it might be a jasper or a chert. Not sure. Either way, I know it's coming home with me. It's pretty to me. Along with this one there, the quartz and feldspar. Apparently that little bug wanted to be in the video too. So let's make sure we get him good. That's a cool one. Alright, let's see what else we find out here. Came across another fossil. Looks like some Cladopora. Based on what I see from the top. Maybe not. Not sure if that's Cladopora or if that's a piece of horn coral. I'm thinking Cladopora though. Not positive. Super cool though. That's awesome.
looks like a little baby pudding stone too. That's super small. That's probably the smallest one I've ever found. Jasper quartz and quartzite in there. Super cute. I bring all my pudding stones home. Looks like I found my first piece of unikite for the day. Now these ones are fun to find because of the colors. I really love the reds and greens from Feldspar and Epidote. That's super cool. That one's pretty. I really like that one. And also, Looks like another Protoski. Yep, that's super cool. Also, sitting next to my sprayer, otherwise I would have missed it. Looks like some horn coral. top of some favoritesities that's sweet I like that a little bit more and then we're gonna take off for the day so we're just sitting here in the same spot came across one that I'm not sure what this fossil is it looks really cool though. Might be a shell imprint, I'm not positive. It's really pretty though. Let me know if you know what that one is. That's cool. Just found one of the biggest banding rocks I've found. Not sure, mudstone, sandstone. Not sure, but super cool. It's a really big one. No, I'm definitely grateful for today. Every day, really. That's pretty. I like that. Along with a nice piece of jasper. That one's cool. It's a good size, that'll tumble well. Not really sure what's going on there. Look cool though. Another fossil. And another Protowski. Happy for these. These are pretty. There's just so many rocks here at this place, it's crazy. 
really grateful for that and for these. Nice chunk of Petoskey. Sorry about the wind. It's gonna start raining here soon. Some cool coral. This one looks really pretty. Looks like it's a piece of a horn coral. That's really nice. That one's really cool too. It's got a lot of detail to it. Also, this cool looking piece of shirt. Looks like it's got a little blue inside of it. That's really cool. Just hints of it, but I'm sure there's more inside. Now this one's really pretty. That's super cool. Again, sorry about the wind. It's gonna start downpouring on me here soon. Just thought that one was really pretty. Super cool. Some pipe organ coral. And then, I am really not sure about this one. That is really cool though. Does anybody know what that is? I'm not sure if that's a rock or if those are crinoid stems or what. Super pretty, whatever they are. I don't see any sideways. So I don't think they're crinoid stems. Whatever it is, is really cool though. I like it. Well, we got our last few finds of the day here. Sorry, I don't have any more water to wash them off. But that's a nice Petoskey. That's cool. Little banded shirt. There's just a little banding in there. A little bit there too. Not much. Still a really cool piece of shirt though. And also, that's super cool piece of coral. Nice chunk. Alright, we're going to start to head home now. Goodbye, Hill. We'll see you again tomorrow.
I know there's probably a couple things that I didn't add in when it comes to identifying and how I do it. Let me know if you guys have any other tips too. Add them to the comments, please. I really appreciate that. We'll make more of these for identifying. And there's definitely more than one way and multiple methods. Mine's not the best, but it works for me. So I really appreciate everyone watching and listening today. I love the way water shapes this earth. It's so beautiful and really extreme at the same time. It's really cool. Just found another pudding stone. Not the greatest. So cool. And also, I don't know what that is. Wish I had some more water. I'll take a picture of that one once I get it home and washed off. That just looks cool. The colors and layers in it. It's probably just a piece of granite. Nice. Or even schist. Anybody know what these green rocks are? There's a lot of them here. Just dug that one out. It's really pretty. Leave it there for next time just in case. Not sure what they are. Just a couple of finds on the gravel road here, dirt road. More of a sand road. Cool little piece of coral. And then also that one looks like it's gonna be fun to cut open. Sorry I'm not stopping. It's supposed to storm here in a couple minutes, so I'm trying to beat that. We'll see it's inside. Maybe tomorrow. This is a massive tree, birch tree, that some beavers took down. I cannot move it, I already tried. There is a number at the end of the railroad here by my street to call. So I'm going to call that as soon as I get down there. So we made it back home. Unfortunately my phone died. It must have been a personal experience I was supposed to go through. But uh, the last clip I showed had the tree over the train track and I was making my way back to the main road to call the number, the emergency number, on the sign as I heard a train coming towards me. So I started running, running down the train track to flag the guy down, waving my arms in the air like a psycho because I know he wasn't going to be able to see that tree because it's around the bend. And I'm glad I did because at first I think he was mad that I was on the train track because he was honking at me. But then I think he realized that I was trying to warn him and he instantly put the brake on and you could hear that. 
and he stopped just in time right before the tree. So then, apparently they all have to carry axes on them here. He started to cut the tree. But he thanked me for stopping him. He really appreciated that. So I thought that was a really cool experience and I wanted to share that with you, even though I didn't get to have it on film. It was extremely loud with the train only a couple feet away from me as it blew past me. But I'm grateful that he stopped. These were the rocks that I wanted to show you at the end here. This is that one. Not really sure what it is just quite yet, but I just thought I had pretty color and it's going to sit in my flower bed. That's pretty. And then as I was talking to Roy, the train operator, I found this standing right next to him. I asked him if he wanted it. He didn't, so I took it. Death plate, crinoid stems all over it. But also, my first gastropod. That is so cool. I love that. So it was a really exciting day, and this was an awesome way to end it here. Made a new friend, too. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. I really hope everyone enjoyed. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you on tomorrow's adventure.